Good morning, guys. It's a little bit chilly here today, so I'm gonna move quickly through my opinion piece here. But I wanted to talk with you about a really popular, inexpensive, homemade option for a mechanical milker for your goats. It's this, the mason jar brake bleeder pump milker. I'm gonna tell you why I hate this thing. As far as sourcing materials, it really wasn't hard to find the things that we need. We used a mason jar that we already had on the farm, the brake bleeder we found over at Harbor Freight. My husband probably already had this, he's a medic. And we found some tubing, I think at Tractor Supply. This is silicone tubing. Um, we had purchased a dairy goat from Living Traditions Homestead. We purchased Rory and a few others. And this is how they suggested we milk Rory because Rory's a really hard, fidgety milker. You've seen her in my last video. She's the first goat that I milk. And they didn't have their pump on hand to sell with her. So they encouraged us to recreate the one that they had made in their video. And we did. We used their video. I looked up the video that they have where they are pumping Rory, the exact goat that I was trying to pump. I just knew that if I did exactly what they did, that it would work. And it, it did it. I mean, we got some milk out. I'm not going to lie. What you do is you hook, you hook this little um, syringe. You might need a fatter one if you've got a goat with a bigger teat, but Rory's a Nigerian dwarf. You hook that on and it's connected in here in the lid you can see under it in there we have uh, two tubes one tube is for the milk to flow in the other one connects to the brake bleeder to create a vacuum inside the milker so you pump out the air from the milker and it creates a vacuum that sucks down on the teat and draws the milk out of the goat my problem with the brake bleeder is you need about 10 pounds of pressure in inside this canister here for it to draw, start drawing the milk out of the goat. It seemed really painful for her. Her teeth got really large, really purple, and honestly, it got too inflamed to remove all of the milk. This is when I started hand milking after pumping when I was first using this thing. Sorry, somebody's here to buy a rabbit. Let me pause. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. We sold three rabbits this morning. I only expected one, but they bought three, which is always a great bonus. So back to this thing. It draws, with the 10 pounds of pressure, it draws the teat down into the cup here and in turn draws the milk out of the teat. Um, it seemed to cause a lot of pain for the goat. She was super uncomfortable, hated this thing. No wonder why she's a kicky goat. And it didn't seem to function very well because the teat would get really large and purple and it seemed like it would just inflame the teat to where the milk really wouldn't flow out efficiently anyway. I feel like Using this kind of thing, you could be sacrificing in a few areas, like the comfort for your animal and really their milk supply, because if you're not able to draw out all of the milk, you're signaling her body to stop producing. And this doesn't seem very effective at removing all of the milk. When I had first started using this brake bleeder pump, that's when I had started following up with the hand milking, and I could get a lot out hand milking more efficiently than this thing. <laughs> And like I said, this just seemed really painful and unnatural. So I've got four kids and I did breastfeed all of them and I did use a breast pump for some of that time. So I'm really familiar with how these things work and they seem to function better <laughs> for humans and for goats. probably hear it. It's got a pulsating vacuum. That's the letdown mode. You can see in here we have a very steady pulsating vacuum. The vacuum turns on 
and then it releases. It turns on and then it releases. Much like the, the kid goat would do when they're suckling the milk out of their mother. This allows for a more efficient milk drawing and a more efficient letdown and a more comfortable experience for the goat. And if she's comfortable, she's happy and she's going to let down much more of her milk. This is still not as efficient as hand milking, in my opinion, or as efficient as a goat kid. Nothing is as efficient as a goat kid. But this is a really close second, in my opinion, for a good price to a goat kid rather than this brake bleeder milker. I think this kind of pump is good in theory. Um, it's just not very good in practice. At least it hasn't worked well for us at all. It's collected a lot of dust as I've just had it sitting up here on the shelf in my barn. Um, because the last time I tried to use it, I just, I finally gave up. I tried several times on several different goats and it just made milking a headache and it made it harder than it had to be. I will say the volume that you can contain, like you could attach a half gallon jug to this if you wanted to. That's pretty awesome. This one, the biggest, you know, human baby bottle I can find is a nine ounce, but I just stop milking and dump it every so often. You can buy a pulse milker that's designed for a dairy animal. It kind of combines this sort of teat cup with this kind of pulsating action and then you can get like five gallon canisters. So that's ideal. They're just really expensive. So I think for somebody starting out with goats trying to figure out um, this life and if goats are for them and and how, how all of this works. This is a really inexpensive option to get you going that is efficient and effective and comfortable for the goat and for you. I hope that helped give you a little bit of insight into a very popular, um, well-circulated idea and how it doesn't function super well in practice, at least not for us. So if you've gotta do something other than hand milk, which sometimes isn't easy, especially with a first freshener or as you're learning to hand milk, go with something like this. You can buy them on Amazon. You can find them at retailers. They're around $25 or $30 and it's well worth the investment. So I'm going to get back inside. It's really cold. We've got like a polar vortex coming down this way and we're getting what I hope is our last freeze for the season here in zone 7B in the Southwest Kentucky.